Hello everybody. Um, sorry I didn't make a video yesterday. Um, I just had a lot on my plates and so I chose not to make one. Um, <clears throat> but today I felt like I should give an update. Um, my birthday party has been postponed. Um, so a surprise I had planned for you guys. Uh, we'll have to wait. Um, I know everybody's anxious to see what I look like in my full regalia. So, um, and so I, um, will have to wait to do what I had planned until the party actually happens. Um, my friend who was hosting the party, um, his son got exposed to, or potentially exposed to the coronavirus. And so, um, their house is on lockdown for 14 days. So, um, hopefully it'll be in two weeks after they discover, oops, let me take that out of my pocket. Um, in two weeks after, um, the quarantine time has passed. So, uh, for now there's no birthday party, um, tomorrow. So that kind of sucks, but oh well. Um, oh, didn't really know what else to really talk about. Uh, cause that's really the big news. Um, I am planning some sobriety related posts soon. Um, but I kind of find that, um, I'm running out of things to talk about. I don't, how do I stay interesting? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so if you guys have any ideas or things that you want to hear about, um, or anything, post it in the comments and I'll be very glad to oblige as long as it's not like run around naked in your backyard, you know, because that wouldn't fly on YouTube. And also my dog poops back there. And so running around barefoot just seems like a bad idea. So um, I will refrain from things like that. So, um, oh, I have an idea. I just have an, I have, I have an idea. I know what, not for this video, but for a future video. Um, how about... If there's anything you'd like to know about me, you email me um, a question. We'll do, if you want to email a couple questions, I'll just take the top 20 that I like and I will answer them. So um, get your thinking caps on and find out what you want to know about me. And as long as it's not, well, I mean, I've told you so much on here anyway, so it's not like anything's a secret. Um, so feel free to email me, ask me questions, and I will answer as many as I can. So like I said, you can email multiple questions and I'll put my email in the bottom of this video like I always do, so you can email them to me. Um, and I'll, I'll give that a couple days for people to send those in and um, I will answer them sometime next week. Um, yeah, that was a really good idea. I saw somebody else do that. And so it just finally came to mind that I had meant to say I wanted to do that. So email me questions. Um, if I don't get a whole, whole lot, I'll still answer as many as I can. It doesn't necessarily have to be 20, but I just figured 20 was a good round number. So, but like I said, ask as many as you want and I'll, I'll take the top 20 that, um, that I, that I want to answer. So, um, I, while bummed about the party, um, I feel like it's for the best because the last thing I want for my birthday party is to catch the coronavirus. So I know there's been a lot of frightening stuff in the news and other media about it. Um, Tom Hanks and his wife, I don't know if you heard, they contracted it while they were in Australia. Um, and it's summer there, so that's, uh, they don't have a lot of cases in Australia at the moment because it's summer. Um, but I guess it's still potential to get it even in the summer. So I know they were kind of hoping that once it got warmer here in the United States, um, that it would kind of die off, um, a little bit. So, uh, fingers crossed that that's true. Um, or I guess I should say for everybody in the Northern Hemisphere, um, we should hope that not just here in the States, but any, any country in the Northern hemisphere that is currently, um, going through some bad times with it or have the potential to, 
Um, cause there's cases here in Oklahoma city. Like, I mean, like I said, my, my, uh, friend, his son was exposed to it at a, um, Oklahoma city thunders game cause he works security. And one of the players from the other team, I believe that's the, that's the story had uh, contracted it and, and it came back positive. That that's why he, or that's what happened. And I, I know the teams were quarantined to the, um, their locker rooms and um i had someone at my meeting tonight say that a friend of his um her husband works for the thunder and he was stuck in that locker room with everybody so um i will um remain positive that it's not going to be bad here um I am trying to get a job in the medical field, so I know that puts me at greater risk for it. Um, but not working right now, I'm pretty safe. Um, but that also needs to change. Not the safe part. I want to remain safe. Um, but I want to um, get a job. And so I, I need a job really bad. So hopefully... I mean, and who knows? Maybe by the time I do get a job, things will be better and it's not going to be as contagious as it is in the wintertime. Excuse me. But it's um, a new virus and so you never know how it's going to behave. So, um, but we can't deny it's here in the States at least. Um, and we seem to be smart. So, I'm not an aficionado on it. I haven't read up tons and tons and tons on it. So, I, I mean, I still have yet to shave my beard and mustache because I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I know that it's, it's very vain of me to be like that because I like my beard and mustache. Um, you know, so it's it's not the... Smartest thing probably in the long term, but for now, it's staying. Um, now, if I get a job in a healthcare setting, they might make me shave. You know, the, there's certain places that kind of do <clears throat> do that because you can't have a proper seal around the mask required for um, coronavirus with and if you have facial hair. Um, but generally. Um, the type of phlebotomy jobs that I see available are only for outpatients. So there's still the potential to come in contact with somebody who does uh, have it, but um, it won't be like if I was working in a hospital where people could come in without knowing that they have it or they have it and they expose people or whatever. So um, I didn't really mean to make this a scare video. Um, I guess I could talk about something else. Um, I don't know if I've ever shared about my 25th birthday party. Um, if this is a retelling, I do apologize. But uh, a picture of my 25th birthday um, came up on my um, memories today on Facebook. And I saw... Um, um, the photo, and it reminded me, I was like, I did something really fun for my 25th, and now I'm doing something fun for my 35th. Um, I wanted to do something really fun because I, at that time, felt that 25 was going to be the last time you could do a fun and crazy party and um, get away with it. So, um, not get away with it, but that I could probably do it. I think I thought anything after that, I would end up being too old or whatever, but it, it turns out that every single birthday since then has royally sucked. <laughs> so I, I chose the correct birthday to do something really immature and have a blast. So um, what happens is I was trying to think of something and I was like, what the heck am I gonna do that would be fun that my friends would enjoy? And I found a skating rink that had a bar and um, they let you play your own music. They said, bring in your own playlist. And, um, um, you know, you can drink. And we have a bar that you can buy drinks from and everything. And I was just like, that sounds like so much fun. So I called it Drew's 25th 
Xanadu spectacular. And we dressed up all kinds of crazy. Um, everybody. I mean, there were a couple people who just came in regular clothes, but I would say about 90 to 95% of the people there dressed up crazy. Um, and uh, it was so fun. I have never... Well, one, I'd never been to a skating rink that had a bar. Um, so that was one thing. Um, and whenever we got there, there had been a party there before us because they do two parties a night. And I chose the later one because I'm an adult and I don't want to be, you know, drinking at five in the afternoon, which I did all the time. But I didn't want to have an early one. So I chose the second slot and... Um, my friends and I, we got so drunk. And they were like, yeah, you can take the drinks out on the floor. Just be careful. If you spill it, just put out a cone. There were so many cones on that floor. I mean, it, it was like trying to, you know, what's that? Um, a slalom. A slalom. But on roller skates, you had to just like dodge all the cones. Um, and they were generally right near where um, you come on or come off the floor. Um, and so it was, it was really funny. They would come out, a person would mop it and they'd put up a cone and it, it, it was just, there were cones everywhere. Um, cause we were my friends, you know, pseudo alcoholics, you have to hold on to your drink while you skate. Cause it doesn't make sense to put it down because you want to drink it, right? Oh my God. I can't believe how I used to think back then. Um, but you know, now looking back at how not reckless because nobody drove home drunk well most of the people didn't i know some people did get behind the wheel and that wasn't smart but a lot of us took um ubers um to the party and home um so i that's what we ended up doing because i'm pretty sure uber, yeah uber was around back then i think maybe we just took a taxi anyways whatever it was an uber or a taxi we didn't drive because I knew I wasn't going to hold back my liquor uh, so I could drive. And the two people that I was with that, that got ready at my house, which was my roommate, Colleen at the time, and um, another one, um, girl who I'm no longer friends with now, unfortunately, but uh, her name was Megan. Uh, we all got ready at our place and the pictures from being at the house getting ready were just a riot. Um, putting on our clothes and doing makeup and hair and I, I I got blue sparkly hair gel and I did my hair probably about like this and um it was um it was really sparkly and I had these sequined hot pants I mean if they were any shorter you would have seen my junk um and then I had a gold lame vest with a fur coat, which I think I have the fur coat. Just one second, I'm gonna get the fur coat. It's here. All right, I'm gonna put it on, it has to be a surprise. Oh, there's that dress. I was wondering where that was. All right. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? So this is what I wore. And you see it's short sleeves because it's meant for a woman. So um, being a man of the gay persuasion, of course I don't mind wearing women's clothing because that's what my hot pants were. Um, uh, women's as well. I got them from H&M and it was just a random happenstance find. It was the last pair. It was an extra large and it was like on the rack where it was like the rejects from the, um, from the dressing room. And I was just walking by on the way back to the dressing room and I saw them and I was like, yoink, put them on. They fit. Oh my God. I was, I was in seventh heaven. So, um, I'm going to leave this on for the rest of the video. I feel so fancy. Like, like, um, 
I can't think of an actress who would wear this. I mean, this is faux fur, by the way. I, I, yeah, not, this is faux fur. But I got this at a uh, costume shop um, that did vintage clothing sales. Um, so they sold costumes, but like a lot of the costumes were rentals as well. So you could rent costumes or buy vintage stuff and make your own costumes. So I did that. Um, and I, this is one of the best buys I've ever, I sit a little closer. This is one of the best buys I've ever made. Like, it's just, oh, look at that. It's got these little like seams down the side. So it looks like it's all poofy. Um, it's just, it wears so well. Um, I've gotten to use this again. Um, now for the life of me, I cannot remember what for. Well, I did do a cosplay for, um, um, American Horror Story a few years ago where I dressed up as Liz Taylor from, um, um, American Horror Story Hotel, and it went so good. I was getting, asking people to take pictures with them left and right. It just got to where my best friend at the time was like, I'm just going to always hold your stuff and be the picture taker. So, um, it was really fun. But I think I was going to wear, I was going to do a costume change. I wore this, uh, green flowy, um, um, robe that had like stuff on the end um because it was from like one of the first scenes that Liz Taylor was in uh where she's walking down the hallway and it's just like flowing behind her so I wore that um and I did a photo shoot in James's apartment at the time um and it was very old looking on the inside so it was a wonderful photo shoot um so it was it was really fun um I don't tend to dress in women's clothing a lot, but if I did and was like a drag performer, I know I would be so freaking entertaining. Um, I don't think, <laughs> um, I don't know if I have the guts to actually do it. Um, but, um, like I'll hear a song and I'm like, oh my God, if I was doing this in drag, I would do this. And it's never anything that's like simple. And it's never like I'm listening to um, an Ariana Grande song that's like new and popular and I just want to like rock it out in drag. Like, no, like I like to, I, the numbers that come to mind are like weird stuff, like weird, weird stuff. <laughs> and, um... I would not get rid of my mustache if I did drag. I, I have to keep it. Ah! 